Welcome back to Pop Cult X, your go-to for all things pop culture from our Gen X sensibilities. My name is Daniel, and along with Gabriel, we're glad you're here. Now, if this is your first time here at Pop Cult X, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the follow button, make sure you like it, and make sure you share it. Now, if this is your returning listener, welcome back. You know what you're in for, and that's one hell of a good time. So let's just jump right into it. Gabe, I know you said off air that you talked about or that you watched The Batman. So tell us all, was it The Great? It, it was really great. So The Batman lives up to the hype. I think oh, okay. that for once, you know, we, we finally get what we're with our expectations. So there's a lot to unpack. So the first thing is that the cast did an amazing job. Uh, surprisingly, I really like Robert, Robert Pattinson in the Batman role. Um, I think he did a really good job. He kind of embodies that kind of uh, solemn, loner, um, Mm -hmm. nihilistic sort of uh, guy that I think our generation kind of relates to. Um, I think that it's been mentioned that the director asked Robert to embody like a Kurt Cobain type figure. Yes, he did. Obviously, (laughs) Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain being, you know, our sort of icon of our generation. Obviously, that speaks to me. Uh, the other actors in the film are amazing. Uh, Colin Farrell's a penguin does a great job. He is. Yeah, yeah I heard you can't even recognize him, right? You can't. You can't recognize him at all. So, uh, the makeup, great job. His voice, he has that like New York mob accent. Clo- um, uh, Zoe, Zoe Kravitz, mm-hmm. yeah, she does an amazing job as Selena Kyle. Um, very mysterious. Beautiful, obviously, but plays a very smart character. And um, the Riddler is amazing. He's very creepy. Uh, Paul Dano, uh, yeah. Paul Dano, yeah. And he plays, you know, without ruining it, the, they do a take on the Riddler that is kind of unique and original in the sense that it's not comic book esque. <laughs> um, in the not sense, not a flashy that green suit. Not, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's not Jim Carrey. It's it's very, <laughs> um, you know real life crime it's like based off of real life crime so the movie itself like the aesthetic is kind of if you were to marry a detective noir film with a um serial killer uh kind of movie and then mix in like the superhero aspect of it so it, oh, okay. it, it's really good with like some like mafia mob type stuff thrown in um it's is there really like cool. a horror element to it um horror in the sense that like silence of the lambs is scary because it, it's like the gotcha. you know, okay. real life monsters mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. made up monsters. Gotcha. So in, in that sense, it is creepy. It is scary. Uh, it's definitely not for kids, I would say. I think that it's definitely for teenagers and up. Uh, okay. So it's not like Batman Returns or uh, what's the one with the bat nipples? I always forget the Joel Schumacher <laughs> yeah. version of Batman where it's like super for is that Batman well, Forever? Not, Batman Forever. The not George Clooney Batman. version? Yeah. Um, so I think that one was maybe more for kids with the colors yeah. and the aesthetic. This one is a little I bit agree. more for, for adults, I think. Uh, I think that it kind of – it's it really appeals to I think probably our generation of that Gen X because it has a Nirvana soundtrack. So uh, there's one particular Nirvana song that is sort of the theme song for the Batman and that's um, Something in the Way um, by Nirvana. And it really that's sets the awesome tone. Song. Yep. For the movie, um, I think it it kind of encapsulates the personality of Bruce Wayne in this particular film, um, and it's just it's really great. I don't want to ruin the movie with a lot of the the plot points, but uh, it definitely is a detective movie in line with Batman being a detective, you know, being mm-hmm. a crime uh, detective, um, and partnering with uh, Commissioner Gordon and. I was going to say. Uh, he's also um, someone else that does a great job in the film. Yeah, I heard great Jeffrey actor. Wright was phenomenal as Lieutenant Gordon in this movie, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's it's just a really good like crime, mystery, suspense, slash superhero movie. Cool. It, it, and it is three hours long. So if you go, you know, maybe <laughs> That's why I on, haven't watched it yet. <laughs> <laughs> plan on making a trip to the, the restroom like halfway through or don't drink a lot of soda before you go in. Uh, but it's a great film. I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it yet. Well, I hear um, 
there's a great car chase scene in it and that the yes. Batmobile is just fantastic. And I, and I read somewhere that they modeled it after Stephen King's Christine. Yeah. So the killer car, you know, I didn't recognize that particular influence on the design of the car, but okay. I will say that this is probably my favorite Batmobile of any of the Bat movies. Wow. Cause the Batmobile okay. is always like sort of a sleek, you know, rocket fueled, uh, yeah, yeah. futuristic looking car. This one is like more influenced, I think, by like a hot rod and like a souped okay. up hot rod. So I think it's just really cool. It just really looks badass. And uh, <laughs> the chase scene in particular is just action packed, really cool, not over the top. It's almost realistic in the sense that you could actually see this happening in real life. Um, so it's really cool. <laughs> now, did they mention um... – in the movie, do they ever refer to Selena Kyle as Catwoman? They don't. So that's another thing that's interesting is that her outfit is, you know, it alludes to the fact that she's a cat burglar, that she okay. is a thief just like that in she sneaks in. The other series, yeah. Yeah, with Anne Hathaway. Yeah. She does refer to herself, I think, at one point when she says, like, the bat and the cat. So it, it, kind of refers to that they she has cats she says she takes in strays so they you know that that's it's cat woman but mm -hmm. she isn't in the she's not you know as everyone refers to the batman as the batman uh, she isn't like the cat woman uh <laughs> but she is very cool she it at first when i saw it i was kind of like oh that's not very dramatic or uh I don't know. It just didn't very look comic book esque. But when I saw it in the world that it it you know she portrays or she lives mm -hmm. in, it is very realistic. You can kind of see someone being a cat burglar uh, wear that, and it okay. fits the character. So it does look really cool. And she did a great job. Cool. Yeah, I've heard great things about her portrayal of Catwoman or Selena yeah. Kyle. So yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it now. I guess. Yeah. So much so that I I actually hope that they do a Catwoman or Selena Kyle spinoff. I think they've announced that they might be oh. doing a Penguin movie, which uh, makes sense because he did a great job in the Penguin role. And it, I think that they could flesh out that movie. Uh, but I think Catwoman and Selena Kyle and Zoe Kravitz deserve their own film. So uh, hopefully we see that sooner than later. Now, I haven't seen it. And so I'm basing all my opinions off what you're telling me. But – so is, there's no obvious reason why he's the penguin. I mean, like in Batman Returns, we see Danny DeVito as a penguin. You know, he looks like yeah. a penguin. He eats fish like a penguin, you know, so he has the mannerisms and characteristics of a penguin. So right. they take a different tact, it sounds like, in this movie. Yeah, I think that that it, it's – he's a mobster, so I'm not like ruining any plot point. Yeah. But he's a mobster. <laughs> As we know, mobsters typically give each other like nicknames Nick, like <laughs> okay. you know, the Iceman or uh, Slim or whatever. So <laughs> Jimmy it, No Thumbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, 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 um, it has to do with his stature. He's a big guy, you know, and, you know, I think he has like a bad leg, so he kind of limps. So – there you go. Okay. But he's not like eating fish in this movie. <laughs> he's not walking uh, around. <laughs> yeah. He's not wearing like a, a tuxedo with like penguin tails or whatever. So uh, <laughs> that would be funny if it was though. <laughs> yeah. Um, John Turturro actually plays the mob boss in this movie. And he's also someone that does a really great job in his role. Oh, nice. Really cool. I, I didn't know he was in the film, but when he came out, I was like, wow, like they, they did a really great job with casting. Yeah, that's – and not to get sidetracked off this movie, but that's one thing that I've been reading a, a lot of push recently to get casting directors and stunt people um, get their recognition on like the Academy Awards. So – because it really – casting can make or break a movie. So it's yeah. it's good to see that that they did a good job in this one. I I do hesitate to, to give too much accolade, accolades to people in casting because – they do a great job for the white community. So there's some great casting okay, when it yeah, comes to yeah. putting Julia Roberts, putting Tom I Cruise. You. But I, I think a lot of the blame for a lack of diversity comes from casting. I think that sometimes like they're the gatekeepers for actors even being able to, to have that sit down with the director or with the producer. Uh, and, and actually, uh, Zoe Kravitz talks about that, that she – 
audition for The Dark Knight mm-hmm. and and was told by someone in casting that she was, uh, you know, I think too dark um, and that she oh, wow. didn't want someone who was urban. Um, and, oh. you know, basically, yeah, I, I mean, you. outright racist. I mean, how could she, you know, what? how does her race really have anything to do with uh, her being able to portray a role. Right. Uh, and yeah, I think it worked wow. out for her because here she is a few years later playing Catwoman. So, you know, jokes on the, whoever that casting agent is. But um, I I feel like casting agents are sort of have been like the villain in Hollywood for a really long time. Um, not to, to like <laughs> shit on casting directors, but I mean, they're the ones that, that kind of cast uh, – you know, they're sometimes they're lazy. They they cast you know Hispanics in the roles of like the crooks and Our the robbers and the one, gangsters yeah. and yeah. and oh, oh that reminds me. So I saw this film. Um, I forget what it's called. It's it, it, it's ba- this is so the film is based off of a series of tweets that a girl posted on Twitter, and it's about a girl getting sucked in into like trafficking and sex work. Oh, wow, and. There's one part where um, the two girls, one is like a sex worker, the other one's the girl that's getting pulled into it. They go to a house in Miami with like a bunch of Hispanic people. So this is something that I think that people who aren't kind of aware of different ethnic groups and their culture, Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of cholos in Miami (laughs) or in the Florida area. That's a very (laughs) West Coast aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Um, And so – that's one. That's like, okay, casting director, like you kind of missed the mark. And I think that might have to do with like the the director and like them just being ignorant and like not yeah. knowing that that's, that's the culture. Um, two, when I was looking at the, the, um, the trade, the end credits, and I was looking at, you know, the actors and I, I don't know why I was watching it because typically I don't read who plays what you know unless it's a uh, a marvel mcu movie and i'm waiting for like the end mm-hmm. credit scene mm-hmm. um and literally they name these hispanic characters jose jose number one and then like five of them as the other jose's oh my goodness and it's not that i was like super offended by it i think that maybe it was someone trying to be cheeky and funny but imagine if they did that to someone in like the african-american community i don't think they would have the same reception and i think that that right now it's acceptable in a way that they don't get as much pushback or they're they're not as uh, they're willing to still put us in that light as Hispanic people. And and that's a shame. Um, I think that, that the people who did the movie are probably open to it, it, the main character is an African-American girl. So I think that it's it's not like just a bunch of white people that's made this movie. But it is disappointing that they kind of did such a stereotypical thing, like yeah. unnecessarily. It could have said, you know – uh, John number one because they're Johns like they're paying for mm-hmm. sex or mm-hmm. it could have been you know client number one client number two gangster whatever but the fact that they like are sort of making fun of like uh, a stereotypical name I, I was just yeah. like it was cringy it was annoying uh, and so it could have at least went with Juan like it, it just it was annoying it, it was yeah. uh I caught it and I was like, gross. It was stupid. Uh, So that's kind of like when I see, think of casting directors, I still think of that. I still think of the people that are, you know, like John Leguizamo saying he had to play gangsters coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, Salma Hayek who had to play maids, Eva Longoria. Like there's all these people that, that had to like break down doors because casting agents were the ones that are putting them in those stereotypical roles and don't have the foresight to think like, let's cast things in a little bit different way. Like how about friends instead of it being an all Lily white cast, let's introduce Mm -hmm. some diversity Mm -hmm. into that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm not putting all the blame on casting directors. A lot of it has to do with production and directors and the whole system itself, but I'm not ready to give them any kudos and pats on the back until I see a lot more diversity (laughs) when it comes to casting. So I think you calling them gatekeepers was an excellent term because they, they can be. So yeah. Yeah, well, and especially when you hear so much from people of color that say that they audition for a role and their feedback is like, oh, we're not really looking for an urban type. And it's like, 
Is that all you see from people of color is like you don't see that there are like people of color that are cowboys or that are Ivy League educated people or Mm -hmm. like is that all you see is that like we're hood and ghetto like because that that's what you're saying that to me that's that's the message that you're putting out where is that coming down from like you said is that mandated from the producers is that it's i think it's their personal bias i think that it's their bias and it's lazy i i remember taking a a screen uh, a screenwriting class at at the university of arizona my freshman year and i had my professor my teacher talking about stereotypes and Mm -hmm. this is 95 90 yeah 95 and he said you know as much as ethically we don't want to stereotype people because that's wrong Mm -hmm. in movie making it's easy and it's a quick way for your audience to understand the character. So yeah. if you want to have a quick, you know, cop, make him Irish. If you want a priest, make him an Irish priest. That in in continuation of that, if you want a crook, make him, you know, black, make him Latino. Make him urban. Um, yeah. If you want a maid, make her Latina. So and it's that thinking of like it's quick. You don't have to explain the character. People think that they understand that character based off of an outward appearance um, and it, but it's just super lazy. And, and that's is. all I yeah, think that that's is. what it comes to is laziness and ignorance. And, um, uh, and, and it's boring as well from an audience. Like we need to be more vocal as an audience and say like, that's really boring. I think that right now you see a lot of, of, uh, people that are, you know, fans of pop culture saying like, I was never a fan of friends because I couldn't relate to it because it was so unrealistic, yeah. like a group of rich white kids living in New yeah. York yeah. And, and you could have peppered it up with, you know, some, I mean, New York, it's like the biggest example of the <laughs> melting pot that America uh-huh. is and you had nothing but white people on it. So, uh, so I think there's been a bit of a pushback recently when it comes to series and, and casting and things like that. So um, I'll hold out until I want casting directors to get a lot of accolades. Um, so until then, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait in judgment and see, you know, when we start seeing the norm being, you know, some more creative casting, then I'll be like, okay, now let's go ahead and bring out the Academy Award for them. Yeah. But, but not yet. Not yet. Almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like the Batman gets um, your Pop Cult X stamp of approval. So, yeah. Make sure everyone go watch it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, while you were spending three hours in, in a theater, I was spending about six hours on my couch, binge watching all the episodes of season four of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Amazon Prime because. Thanks to you and recommending it, it is like yeah. easily one of my favorite shows ever. And season four did not skip any beats. It picks up right where season three le- left off, even though it was two years afterwards, um, yeah. real time. But it's just a fantastic show. It's like for me, I described it as like I'm watching a story, but I feel like it's like my my grand uncle Dan, who was um, <laughs> from my Jew- no, that's my name. His name is Uncle Dan. He would like telling me the story of it, and I get to watch it unfold. It's yeah. that I don't know if you all want to say relatable, but it feels like it. It feels like they're my family and friends, and I'm watching them, and they yeah. invested me so much into their universe that they've created, and it's just yeah. such a fantastic show. Every single episode has been a real hit so far. I've enjoyed mm-hmm. each one. There's two left in this season it just makes me sad really when i read that i was like only two more and then season five which comes out i guess whenever they release it that's going to be the final season so it's like oh it hurts but it's just so great have you caught any of the episodes so i watched the first episode of this new season so i'm super behind um but like you I'm just so happy to be back with those characters. Yeah. They're, they're especially, um, obviously Mrs. Maisel. Um, she's the lead of, mm-hmm. of the show. Um, but, but also Susie, her manager, I think steals the show. I, yeah. I love Alex Bornstein. Um, I think she does such a great job with that character. Um, some of the other, I, I do like Tony Shalhoub. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like, uh, 
who plays the father-in-law, uh, uh, Kevin Pollack. Yes, Kevin Pollack is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mo- Moisha. Mm-hmm. S- sometimes the two dads, I think, can kind of go a little into the caricature world. <laughs> Like they're a little, they're a bit a much. Little bit, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, and but. Uh, so sometimes I'm like, eh, take it back a notch. But <laughs> Rachel and Alex, um, the two, the two leads in the show, they do such an amazing job with just their delivery of their lines. Mm-hmm. Um, they're so believable in their characters. And like you, it's just like seeing friends again. It's like these yeah. characters are, are so beloved. It's definitely an instant classic. Like it's, it's a show that you're going to be able to revisit time and time again. Um, I'm really excited to see where it goes and in the future and sad to, to, you know, see the season end as well. Yeah. Wait till you get to, I think it's episode three or four. They pay, they give tribute to Brian Tarantina who passed away in 2019. And um, of course, so they give tribute in the episode and it's just such a fantastic piece of acting by alex bornstein i won't give yes. it away but when you watch it you're going to be blown away it was very powerful and it's it's more than marvelous the whole season so far and i've been really in, interested and invested in um, michael zegan's character who is joel mazel the husband and mm-hmm. his relationship with may um the who's played by i think her name is stephanie sue I think yeah. well, their relationship has been very interesting, and I'm, and I'm really curious to see where his where he's going to end up with her. So it's yeah, it's just been fantastic. I'm trying to think of other synonyms besides marvelous, what to call it. So <laughs> <laughs> because it is all of that, and and to the creators, um, who is her name, Ala Palandino, I think, and Daniel Palandino, or Anne, I think it's Anne or Anna. Anyways, thank you for creating this world that I get to visit and live in every episode it's just fantastic yeah yeah kudos to the whole team they're really great i expect that they'll be winning some some uh, emmys yeah. soon and it's it's amy amy palandino i apologize sorry amy sherman palandino to be correct i'll get that yeah. out there on the record so you guys don't gotta send me hate mail for it so there, there goes your chances of being casted onto uh, the show. I was hoping for that. Each time I tweet at the show, I'm hoping they remember me and say, oh, yeah, there's that one guy. Let's get him. He's a big fan. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you catch anything else or any other hot topics uh, from pop culture that really grabbed you? I did. So, so something that is a follow-up story to a previous you know, uh, argument or – opinion that i had is this whole kanye west kim kardashian debacle Mm -hmm. um sadly kanye west is sort of doubling down with his tantrum with his shenanigans if you want (laughs) you know um to the to the point where it's now you know like is it stalking is it harassment of his his soon-to-be ex-wife her new boyfriend uh, the reason why I bring him up is that that what I found interesting about the most recent thing is that he made a video in which I think a character, an animation of Pete Davidson is either beheaded or strangled, something to that effect. Wow. I haven't watched it because I'm not I'm not a fan of his music, so there's really no point yeah, to me to me watch either. the video. Um, and Kanye's defense is that as an artist, you know, you create what you're feeling. Um, and you express that and that he has a right mm. to express that anger. Um, I think that he's right in the sense that if you're going through a particular trauma in your life as an artist, you should let that inspire you. It's unfortunate that the way it's inspiring him is to <laughs> to like, you know, uh, portray violence, murder, uh, obsession, uh, misogyny. I mean, all types yeah. of different negative things as opposed to just like maybe sadness or, uh, you know, maybe even uh, a confessional of like maybe what he did wrong to lead to the divorce, you know, maybe uh, trying to to express his love in a way. I mean, mm-hmm. I would imagine that if you were in love with someone that left you and you were trying to win them back, you would spend your time expressing your love and trying to remind them 
why they should be yeah. with you <laughs> As versus to. acting like a crazy person <laughs> um, and attacking the new boyfriend. Uh, the only thing that I can imagine that could come from this is that one, he may risk his chances of having custody of his children, which would be horrible because mm-hmm. everyone should have their father in their life Two, it may end up becoming a criminal matter, depending on how far he wants to push it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and three, he may lose a lot of fans because this is not a good look for someone like it's not, it's not becoming, it's not, um, it, it's really kind of sad, um, and pathetic. Um, I, I did see one tweet today that said, um, so is Kanye West going to be, get a conservatorship or is that something that only happens to women? And, and I thought that it was a good point because we saw that, you know, Britney Spears had her conservatorship mm-hmm. when she went through her, you know, issues. Uh, um, Amanda Bynes uh, is still in a conservatorship. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. And um, I, th- I think there's been some other other stars that, that have been in conservatorships. Um, not Kanye West. And so I think it's been alluded to that he may have mental health issues. Mm-hmm. He definitely is exhibiting strange behavior in the sense that I think that it's it's misogynistic, it's controlling, it's threatening, um, and it's abusive, you know, mentally abusive to, to yeah. Kim Kardashian to, yeah. to be per- pursuing her in this way. Uh, and – Where's where's his team? Where's his team telling him, you know, maybe you should back back down a bit. Maybe you should not go down that that path. Uh, and and just from like a, a, a guy's point of view, like I can imagine that if if an ex of, you know, someone that you're involved with, if they were coming for you and saying, you know, oh, you know, so and so you're a punk like you're you stole my wife. Wouldn't that just kind of, if you're not a good person and you're petty, wouldn't that just make you go even harder with the girl <laughs> or the person yeah, that you're with, the man? I mean, and, and just rub it in their face and just like enjoy life. So like, how is that? I, don't, I Like, does Kanye West think that if he, the more he bullies Pete Davidson, that at one point he's going to say, it's not worth it. I'm going to leave Kim. If it were me, I'd be like, okay, let's get married. Let let's make a, a sex tape. Let's uh, <laughs> let, let's like really rub, rub his face in it. Like you're right. saying, like right. tell his you. kids, like, oh, you're gonna start calling me dad. Like I, I would just be super petty about it. Like and, and um, you can call think, me dad now. <laughs> yeah, like I'm your father now. Um, I think that Pete has shown a lot of restraint. <laughs> Because maybe he knows stuff that we don't know as far as maybe Kanye's mental health situation. Mm -hmm. And I I do think it shows uh, a lot of maturity on his part to not be lashing out and saying, you know, this is the father of these children. I'm not going to attack him. But from a legal uh, uh, point of view or uh, at at some point, like you're going to have to be like, I need a restraining order. Like you mm-hmm. can't be around me. Mm-hmm. Like I don't care if it's just your your artistry, your expression that's saying you want to kill me. That's not really healthy. <laughs> no, <it's- laughs> I think you can only use that as an excuse for 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 so long, right? Um, mm-hmm. Before it it becomes an actual threat. Um, yeah. And I think that it's sort of like wink, wink, like oh, it's just my artistic expression, and it's like okay, sure it is, but you're not going to get custody of your children. Like, yeah. you know, and it's just a weird <laughs> game he's playing. It's just an absolutely weird game. And it's so indicative of like someone who is controlling and misogynistic and, you know, she's not going to leave me. You belong to me mm-hmm. kind of mentality. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's so gross. Like it's just so get over it. Like let, let her go. Like she doesn't belong to you. She doesn't lot want to be with you. Move on. Yeah, it right? is. I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, it is. It's just seeing it from a further away viewpoint than from where you're at, because I don't really yeah. follow that. I just know that um, it just looks terrible. The whole situation, and I, yeah. I mean, not that I feel bad for Kim Kardashian because I don't. 
I don't know. I don't really feel anything for her, but I feel bad for that the family, mainly the kids, because they're trapped. They have no say yeah. in this. They didn't do anything for this, but they're there and they have to witness all this. So you know that's going to be some. That's going to leave some lasting trauma on them. Yeah. Well, and what what's interesting about this is that that I think that people, society in general, they they like to have victims be one hundred percent innocent. So like. It's a whole notion of like, if a woman is raped, like, how is she dressed? Was she drunk? Was mm-hmm. she promiscuous? Literally, none of that has anything to do with the crime itself. Right, right. But that's how we look at things. It's like, like, okay, well, does she deserve getting stalked and harassed by her ex-husband because maybe she's not a good person? No. No. Like, no. and I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of hers, but- Imagine like it it just it goes to show like what I think women have to go through when they go through divorces Mm -hmm. and and imagine high profile like this. Yeah. Well, imagine if she wasn't high profile and she was poor and didn't have resources, didn't have her own money. True. And Mm -hmm. and she was just a regular housewife Mm -hmm. or a regular blue collar worker. I hear you. And her husband was showing up at her job, you know, Mm -hmm. saying you're mine threatening her boyfriend, you know, that's how, you know, sometimes people get fired because they're mm-hmm. like, that's unprofessional. Why do you have yeah, your, you can't well, bring I'm not here. doing anything. Like that's my mm-hmm. ex-husband. Like, and, and it's, you know, and bringing the kids into the, it, it's just, it's, it's a mess. And, uh, and I think that that's part of the reason why I think people that Kanye is getting away with it in the court of public opinion is that the people that aren't fans of Kim are like, well, it's not that they think that she deserves it, but it's like she – because she has attracted so much media attention in the past, they're like, oh, it's just another drama. It's yeah, just another yeah, attention-grabbing you. thing. But it's really – it's it's when you just try to look at it from a, a human standpoint, it's, it's just really kind of sad and um, – it's it, it just it's 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 just it's sad and it's weird. It's weird that that it's getting played out on social media, and Twitter and Instagram mm-hmm. and in vi- music videos. And um, he needs to chill. He needs to find help. He needs to find Jesus. Whatever he needs to do, <laughs> but he his the trajectory that he's on is just like a really weird path that he's on. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> so that, that's all my my judgment on that situation. Uh, yeah. So that that's it. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't have any other closing arguments for that either. I mean, yeah, it's just unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Um, and it, really, outside of that, I think of of the Kanye West, you know. Batman, Mrs. Maisel. Uh, there really hasn't been other things that have been uh, taking my attention away from the news, like as far as like what's going on in the Ukraine and with Putin mm-hmm. and that whole mess. Uh, but like I talked about last podcast, uh, I have been u- turning more to YouTube and watching small clips of, mm-hmm. of things. My <laughs> new recent obsession is. Uh, I forget his name, and I'll have to add it. Maybe I'll, I'll tweet it on on our Instagram or on our Twitter. But he he's an English guy, uh, and he does uh, responses or reactions to paranormal videos. And I've literally been watching him every <laughs> night for like the last five nights. Ninety nine percent of them look super. Well, they don't look fake, but they're not like – they don't convince me that ghosts are real. But Mm -hmm. I'm looking at them as like really well-made home movies. Like I'm like, good for them that these kids in Japan (laughs) made made a movie, a little movie on their phone and it's kind of scary and it's almost like a little independent movie. Like and I think that that kind of speaks to the access that people have to – you know, TikTok or Instagram or or YouTube um, where – they can make little clips like five minute, yeah. 10 minute yeah. mini movies that are really entertaining. I mean, it's sort of like how many people that watch like ghost hunters really think that they're hunting ghosts? Like, right. I mean, really, it's right. not. It's just like entertainment. It's just like 
and, and so I've been kind of obsessed with that. Um, and it's, it's fun. It's kind of spooky in one hand, but funny in the other way, because his responses, he's an English guy, like you said, it, it, it just, the English sense of humor is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I've been watching nonstop. <laughs> Very cool. I've just been yeah. working my way through the Simpsons catalog. Every other day, I watch a couple of new episodes today. Because for a while, I think like from like the first few years I watched, then there was a big gap where I didn't watch any of them. So mm-hmm. now I'm just working my way through the whole Simpsons catalog, and I saw what I thought was the funniest couch gag. It was one where Homer started off as like a single cell organism. And then you saw him evolve into fish and into land animals. When he finally gets to the couch, Marge says, what took you so long? You just see him like exhausted. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and funny. I just thought it good. was so clever and so good. And and I've been, just been enjoying that. Nice. So. Yeah, I, I love The Simpsons. Um, I think Levi's just the jean company, clothing mm-hmm. company, released um, their collaboration with The Simpsons. And, and oh, wow. I want to get a sweatshirt that uh, – it's Millhouse, and it says like everything's coming up Millhouse. That's like mm-hmm. one of my favorite quotes from the show. <laughs> uh, so it's really cool. There's some of the clothes is a little not my style because it's like Simpson yellow, like, and I'm wow. like that's not okay. the most flattering look, <laughs> the jaundice look. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, but some of the other stuff is kind of cool, and I'm like, it's it. I, it's like such a full circle because it's like I remember being in like the third and fourth grade and having like my Bart Simpson T-shirt, my Bart, and my Bart Simpson yeah, and my folder. T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, and it was like don't have a cow, man, and, uh, and I'm like shorts. okay, yeah, and, and like it's literally like thirty years later, and I'm gonna be buying another Bart Simpson <laughs> shirt, so it's kind of cool. Hey. Full I think circle. I think everything that we were into is like cool again, and uh, they just. We're the coolest generation. We are. <laughs> Gen X. <laughs> yeah. I will no. say one thing, though. I've been reading a lot of comic books, of course, on the Marvel app. And how many different Avenger teams are there? My goodness. I started reading the new Avengers. Mm-hmm. And there's the secret Avengers, the savage Avengers, of course, the young Avengers. And I'm like, wow, really? Does it Can't need to be all this? the West Coast Avengers. Oh, I haven't got to them yet. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, new there's Avengers a lot of, is really cool. Yeah, there's a lot of iterations of the team, which I think is what's kind of cool because if you don't like a certain character, you can like go to the group without that it. doesn't have a minute. So <laughs> yeah, and so the the I I want to say that the new iteration of the Avengers right now has Ghost Rider in it. Um, which is the Chicano version of okay. Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm obviously a big fan. Uh, I want to say that ma- that She-Hulk is in it as well, which makes sense because we're getting ready to see the She-Hulk show on Apple+. Yeah. Plus. So I'm sure we're going to see a lot of her. She got her own series again. Um, I went and bought uh, the, the first and second issue, I think, of her, her series. Uh, so yeah, like I... I I, I uh, the Avengers has a lot to offer. Let's put it that yeah. way. There's just a lot of characters. I mean, there's tons of characters that they could get into in the <laughs> movies. So even though the particular, you know, Captain America, Iron Man, Black Widow are done, mm-hmm. they could come back with um, twenty more characters yeah, from could. the Avengers that that would make really, really cool movies. So that's really exciting. Yeah. What other Some comics are you into right now? What What have you bought? Um, I've been buying a lot of um what are they called when there's like a i think it's like trade books is that what yeah, they're called trade paperback yeah so i've been buying trying to snatch up as many of the daredevil series that i've with chip sardaski that written by chip sardaski that i'm trying to collect them all pokemon yeah. it <laughs> but also um <laughs> i've been reading or getting moon knight i got the i want to get his full album or whatever and also what else batman the knight which is a more of a detective um, mm-hmm. type one. So it kind of fits in with the movie, I guess, a little bit. But it's more yeah. about, you know, how Batman became Batman. So it's pr- pretty cool. It's a younger version of him. Um, yeah. What else have I been reading? I think that's it. Bought a lot of Scarlet Witch. I've been buying a lot of David Aja covers because I want to make mm-hmm. like a behind me. I'm just going to start putting up like the covers is like artwork and his yeah. style is just so fantastic. So I got like a couple of Scarlet Witches from him. I got, um, I think it's called like 
X Factor, I think mm-hmm. it's what it's called. And I got one of his that he did there. It's just a lot of cool artwork. So I'm buying a lot of covers for the artwork. Nice. Yeah, I, I do that too. Um, there's a particular artist, um, Peach Momoko, um, who's a Japanese artist that has a very distinctive style that, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it sort of pops out when you're looking at, you know, a, a stack of comics. It's like her, her style is very distinctive. Uh, I just this weekend uh, got fortunate enough that I was looking for um, the first appearance of Generation X um, and got like four or five issues, X Factor's newest run. I got the, the number one issue for that. Um, and when I went to go ring it up, they're like, oh, it's 50% off today. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, sweet. I'm like, <laughs> cool. I should go back and get more. <laughs> get more. <laughs> uh, but, I can uh, double up. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, I had to uh, – get my i was boarding on my books and and uh putting you know putting them in wrapping and and now i have to go back and re-alphabetize them because i probably have like a good 400 that are not alphabetized wow and um as i was going through them last night i realized i have like at least six individual comics that i've purchased two copies of that i forget and then go and i'm like oh i have to get this and i buy it again so that's the one uh, downside of being a uh, Gen X comic book collector is that potentially you forget what you've already purchased <laughs> and you have duplicates of. So nice. That's the downside. Yeah, it's only a downside yeah. if you don't like the comic books. But. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, if one happens to get damaged, I've got a backup. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that I think that's a good point to end today's show on Gabe's damaged comic books. So, yeah. or potentially damaged comic books with a match. Who knows? Carefully <laughs> guarded in my geek room. Yeah. <laughs> so, no one's allowed. <laughs> there you go. No Gen Z allowed, or Gen or millennials. Yeah. 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 So thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to Pop Cult X. We appreciate you sticking around to the very end here. Please do subscribe, do follow, do like, do share. Um, yeah, drop us a comment. Let us know what you what you're watching or what you're reading. Let us know what you're up to, and that way we can you know comment on that. So, um, any final thoughts? Hit subscribe, follow, like, stalk, stalk us. There you go. Stop, stop, stop stalking Con- all right, Kim Kardashian and start stalking us. We can handle it. Hear that, Kanye? Gabe wants <laughs> to be stalked by you. Okay. <laughs> all right, everyone. Have a great Take week. Care. We'll see you all soon. Bye.